An article in the New York Times a few days ago was one that'll get your attention. It reported that the ocean has now broken temperature records every day for more than a year. Even for people who follow global warming, it's a troubling milestone. So why are ocean temperatures rising so dramatically? For some answers, we turned to Dave Reed Miller, the director of the Climate Center at the Gulf of Maine Research Center, Institute rather, in Portland, and began by asking what his response was to the news that those ocean temperature records had been broken every day for a year. Wow, was probably a first reaction. This is really not great news. And secondly, we also kind of expected it. You know, the science, scientists have been telling us, you know, for a couple decades now that these trends are continuing. It sounds as though even the experts like yourself, though, are surprised at how quickly That's right. we're seeing these records being broken and, and the extent of the warming of the oceans. That's exactly true. You know, we, we certainly expect that we've seen that long term trend, certainly here in the Gulf of Maine, in the North Atlantic and even globally. But this year on year jump that we've seen from, you know, 2022 to 2023, which is now lasting into 2024, is truly extraordinary. The change in ocean temperatures of just a degree or two may sound modest, but Dave Reedmiller says one way to better understand the change is to think of the world's oceans the way we think about the human body. When the human body runs a temperature of just a degree or two, we start to feel kind of icky. When it starts to get two, three, four, five degrees warmer than our normal body temperature, systems start to shut down and you find yourself in the hospital. And that's starting to be what we're seeing in the Earth system. I know it's difficult to diagnose what is causing the warming in the short term, in yeah. the short run. Okay. If you, if numbers are up a lot from where they were 12 months ago, it's difficult to pinpoint the reason. But what is the best guess as to why this is happening? Yeah, the answer is going to be an unsatisfying one. <laughs> um, there's multiple drivers, and there are probably drivers that we don't know about, right? El Nino has certainly been a contributing factor to what we've seen over the past year. But we also had a really large underwater volcanic eruption. When volcanoes erupt underwater, they eject a ton of water vapor into the atmosphere. And water vapor is actually a very potent greenhouse gas. And so that has likely contributed on top of the El Nino. So all of these things are contributing on top of that long-term trend of global greenhouse gas emissions. But even so, that doesn't fully account for everything we've seen. And that is reason for concern. Science is clear, though. It's human activity that is driving the warming of both the air and the seas. 100%. It's undeniable. Report after report, investigation after investigation has confirmed that even if you take away all the other natural factors, you cannot reproduce what we've seen uh, in the Earth system without accounting for largely the burning of fossil fuels. There have been numerous news stories which people in this state are familiar with about how the Gulf of Maine is one of the fastest warming bodies of water on the planet. It's true. What do the latest numbers tell you about what's happening out in the Gulf of Maine? There's always going to be that interannual variability, but that long-term trend is undeniable. It's increasing, and it's increasing at a rate that is three times faster than the global average here in the Gulf of Maine. As the oceans warm, sea levels rise. The back-to-back -back storms that hit the coast of Maine in January showed what kind of damage and destruction higher sea levels can inflict. We partner closely with the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association, and I think they put out an estimate that upwards of 60 percent of the working waterfront infrastructure in the state was damaged as a result of that storm. And a lot of that was kind of family-owned, mom-and-pop docks and piers that may not come back. Reed Miller says there was one thing about the January storms that he finds especially unsettling. You know, yeah, sure, they were pretty extreme storms, but they weren't unprecedented in the storms themselves. What made it unprecedented was that long-term sea level rise that you talked about. Climate change stories can be really discouraging. Yeah. But it doesn't do anyone any good for to, to leave people just in a, in a state where they see no hope for change and they just sort of throw up their hands and say, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. So what would you say to people? What can individuals do to make a difference? One of the biggest things you can do is vote. Another thing you can do is 
talk about it, you know, really mainstreaming consideration of climate change into decision making, whether it's at the kitchen table, in the, you know, within your business, at town hall meetings, bring it up, talk about it. What is our community? What is our business? What is our school doing about climate change? And, you know, you can start to have an effect. And Dave Reed Miller emphasizes it's important to retain a sense of hope that the news can be really discouraging, but that humans are adaptable mm -hmm. and we've faced challenges in the past. He noted that where he and I were standing on the Portland waterfront 200 years ago was water. Wow. So humans can change their environment. We're going to have to make changes on the coast. And these are the, some of the things that we're just going to have to deal with. Absolutely. Well said. Thanks, Rob. And up next.